when do you think we're going to get to a point where, or maybe we're already at the point where AI is being used to draft legislation? I think we're already there. So uh, there have been both bills introduced in Congress and in state legislatures that are 100% drafted by AI. Uh, and okay. Yeah. Uh, and one of the primary you know, use cases of first fundamental use cases of AI is content generation. Um, there is a leading consulting firm in Washington that has told every single one of their analysts to start with chat GPT because you will do a faster, better, quicker job. Uh, and it's pretty amazing when you even think about like chat GPT and be able to create your own GPTs. If you were a legislator or an advocacy um, shop or you were interested in doing them in government, you could take 10 different pieces of sample legislation, put it in your own GPT, tell it, the GPT who you were and what you cared about, and then said, modeled after the legislation that I have given you, draft me legislation that would come and do X. And so then you can come and show up and you have got the text right there for the bill. Now, behind the scenes, both Congress and many legislatures actually have professional bill drafters whose job is to come and do this. Uh, and I don't actually know how much they're leveraging now currently AI, but it should be able to make their efforts much more efficient. Uh, and it actually, I think, will be a good thing because there's a lot of demands pressed on them. And they're oftentimes working late at night because someone comes and says, I need an amendment at 9 p.m. at night that I'm going to drop at 930. Write it as quick and as fast as you can. Uh, and so there are big opportunities there. But this is part of also what's very interesting, the modernization that's going to have to go through of government of all of the private sector is going to be leaning in leveraging AI. And so then it's thinking about from a government perspective, how does government leverage AI in an accessible and fair way, but use it to both deliver services more efficiently and also improve the service offerings that they're providing. Now, this is World of DAS. Um, so we talk about data and data businesses, and there are a lot of companies that sell data. And then there's a lot of companies who like build, like let's say, different analysis on top of data. Um, if you're advising a founder or a CEO, like how do you think about like the trade-offs of what they should be focusing on on those two? Yeah, so I'm a really big believer in the concept of innovation waves. And I think it's something I've really seen firsthand as we've entered our market and then also looked at who are the other players that happen in the space. And so just like highest level, you've got the innovation wave with the invention of the internet that happened. Then there was the innovation wave with the invention of mobile apps that gave us Instagram and Uber and Airbnb and Pinterest and that whole generation of tech. And then in the early 2010s is really when I think we saw AWS and Google Cloud and Azure really become much more commercialized and accessible. And at least if I look back on Quorum's journey, I trace a lot of our success and another to a number of other key players in the market that started at that time on the ability to go and spin up servers in the cloud because we had to go yep. collect all this information. And if we want to do that before, we would have to spend a million dollars, put a room full of servers, rent office space. It would have been super hard. But we literally could sit with a laptop and spin up servers on AWS that could come and put all this information in together. Uh, and so for the past 10 years, we really haven't had another disruptive innovation wave. We've been operating our business in a time of stasis where that was the disruptive technology out there. And yeah, you can make an argument, maybe blockchain changed things, but they didn't really touch it for us at least. And so we're now at the start of a new innovation wave of generative AI and that there is new fundamental breakthrough technology that is coming online that changes the way that people operate the same way the Internet did, the mobile app did, AWS, Google Cloud did. And so the advice that I've given to entrepreneurs is you need to think about what innovation wave you're part of. If you go back and leverage technology that's just AWS and Google Cloud and think about how do I go gather as much data as possible, like there's a fairly decent chance someone else out there has already gone and gathered that data at some point in the last 10 years. And so really where I think the future is, is how do you take all this data that's been gathered, all of the innovation wave that's happened over the last 10 years, and actually start to make it smart on top of it? And that is where the next 10 years is going to be. And so you can go spend and focus your efforts on that you'll do 10x farther, better, faster than going and trying to start you know, where someone did 10 years ago and collect the data. Um, but obviously, just given this is the, the world DAS, if you've got a data set that you're 100% sure no one else has out there, um, then there, it can be benefit of going to go and collect that. So don't feel too demoralized on that 